Good evening, all of you, my dear students. Myself, Fanindra. I'm a practicing chartered accountant. I'm going to deal with the paper Strategic Financial Management at CMA Final Level, which is paper number 14. So, I need to explain the approach of this particular subject, how to approach this subject, and how to understand this subject. So, I'm going to explain the teaching approach and how you need to understand this particular subject. I'll explain. Okay. Why? Because we need to travel for a while to understand the subject. Definitely, you need to understand the approach of my teaching. Okay. So, I'll take very less time for this. See, basically, the subject strategic financial management is loaded with so many formulas. So, if you buy hard the formulas, you, can't, you cannot apply such formulas in the examination when you are handling the problems. So, first of all, you have to understand the interpretation and conceptual background of every formula. So, I will explain the conceptual background of every formula and also uh, with the help of numerical examples, I will explain so that you can easily understand every formula. Sometimes if required, I am going to give you the derivation of every formula, but for some of the statistical formulas like uh, in the chapter portfolio management and in some of the chapters like derivatives, uh, I cannot give you the derivations. Why? Because such derivations requires a lot of statistical derivations, which is not at all required for the examination. So, only for few formulas, I am going to give you the reason, uh, reasonable derivation part. Okay. Okay. Then, and also, basically, this is a problematic part, problematic paper. You need to handle lengthy problems. Okay. So, the big thing is, you have to understand the problem. Merely by uh, reading the formulas, you cannot simply solve the problems. Why? Because the approach to the approach is very important for the problems. If you cannot approach the problem problem properly, you cannot handle the problems. Okay. So, if you want to solve the problems, first of all, you would be able to read the question properly and get the data properly and also understand the requirement in the question. Accordingly, apply the data. Why? Because they may give you 10 points. Out of that, you just need 6 points only. The other four points may be irrelevant, which is not at all required for your solution. So, based on requirement, I should get the data and you should and we should solve the problems. So, my dear students, I'll give you I'll give you the approach how to read the question and how to get the required data in order to solve the requirement in the question. Okay. So, this is my approach. So the simplification is very much important. Okay. And also, I'm going to give you the simplified solution for every problem. You know, my dear students, the solutions which were given in the study material are very complicated. Sometimes those solutions are, uh, you cannot easily understand by merely seeing the uh, solution. So, don't uh, focus on the solutions which were given in the study material. I am going to give you the simplified solutions to every problem in our own style. Okay. So, which is always suitable to the examination standard also. So, you don't bother about the solution. I will give you the solution in a simplified manner, that too in a stepwise manner. Okay. And the next thing is, you know, some of the concepts you cannot understand easily. So, I will give you the stepwise process for understanding such complicated concepts. So, this is my way of teaching. So, the first area is what? Interpretation and explanation, conceptual explanation of every formula with the help of numerical examples. And also, I will give you the approach to read the problem and how to get the data and how to apply such relevant data to the requirement in the question. So that you can simply solve the question within uh, very, uh, in, in a very less time. Okay. And also, giving simplified solutions is my own style. So, simply, you cannot understand the solutions in the study material. I will give my own solutions. If you can follow such solutions, you will definitely get good marks in the examination. And also, I will give you the stepwise process for every complicated concept okay and then in my teaching what kind of problems i'm going to cover so this is the first area the coverage of problems you know my dear students in our classroom discussion i'll cover every illustration along with that additional illustrations will be covered and we are, we are going to solve every solved case study and i'll i'll take up these past examination questions also so that we'll get complete grip over the concept along with the problems. But our study material is loaded with so many problems. It is very difficult for you to uh, cover every problem in the uh, in our classroom itself. So I'll give you the printer solution for comprehensive problems and unsolved case studies. Actually, these problems are given just for the practice purpose. And for, for these problems, I'll give you the printed solutions. You don't bother about it. 
see uh, and also sometimes i'll take uh, some of the problems on comprehensive problems if it is required but most of the but in most of the cases i'll give you the printed solutions so in our classroom discussion i'm going to cover illustrations additional illustrations solved case study and past examination questions and i'll give you the printed solutions for comprehensive problems and unsolved case study you know my dear students the problems in the study material are classified into illustrations additional illustrations solved case study and then what comprehensive problems and unsolved case study additionally i have added what the past examination questions along with rtps and mtps also okay yes now and also we need to cover the theory concepts why because in the mcqs in the main examination and the mcqs along with problematic part they'll also give you some theoretical based concepts uh, and or they'll give you mcqs based on theoretical concepts also so i am going to cover such theoretical concepts separately okay so this is regarding my teaching approach so let us understand the weightage of each topic this is a prerequisite why because you need to focus more on uh, i mean uh, some of the important topics and some of the topics may be may carry less weightage you need to give little importance to such topics at the time of preparation also and even at the time of revision just before the examination you should understand the weightage of each topic you know my dear students this weight is strictly given in the study material i'm just following it why because in the main examination also they're following these standards that is the weight is which is given in the study material they're strictly following it okay in one of the examination they have deviated uh, they have deviated but still in the recent examination they have strictly followed this ratios i mean nothing but the weight is okay these are the chapters i'm going to deal look at the chapter names my dear students some of the chapters are very familiar to you why because the, those topics were covered at cma inter level also if you look at the first th chapter investment decisions process planning and control this chapter is already covered at cma inter level well, apart from that remaining all concepts are remaining all chapters are a new to uh, i mean these are new chapters for us okay look at the chapter first chapter investment decisions process planning and control i'll give you an overview of every topic in a simplified way investment decisions process planning and control this is a cma inter topic under this topic how to select the projects and application of several capital busting techniques which deals with selection of the projects like expansion projects diversification projects cost reduction projects replacement decisions see cost uh, this type of concepts we need to understand so this chapter deals with selection of the projects and we are going to deal with cost to benefit analysis now look at the second chapter evaluation of risky proposals for investment decisions you know my dear students in this particular chapter this is nothing but capital busting but with risk actually at cma inter level we have selected every project merely by using what the written concepts only nothing but npv irr profitability index these are all written based concepts only and we are going to select the projects with high return only and we ignore risk factor at cma inter level but at cma final level we are going to incorporate risk in our investment decision process simply speaking while taking investment decision how to consider risk and how to consider this return you should compare risk and return at a time and accordingly you should select the projects so evaluation of risky proposals for investment decisions nothing but risk analysis in capital busting risk analysis in investment decisions so while selecting the project along with return npv i should also consider the risk so accordingly i'll select the project at the time of uh, selecting the projects you should consider risk as well as return so these concepts i'm going to cover under the chapter evaluation of risky proposals for investment decisions under this chapter we need to understand several statistical and non-statistical techniques like standard deviation coefficient of variation probability distribution approaches decision tree simulation like that we have there are several new concepts which we need to deal with okay and then if you go for the next chapter leasing decisions you know already you are very familiar with this term leasing because this is covered at a cma inter and cma inter level and one of the accounting standard covered this particular concept called leasing so but here i'm not going to discuss about accounting treatment i'm going to discuss about the decision making area in leasing nothing but 
from lesser's perspective and from lessee's perspective we have to take decisions because our subject strategic financial management predominantly deals with decision making only we are nowhere concerned with what the accounting treatment so my dear students under the chapter leasing decisions from lessa's perspective whether this investment of uh, investment and asset for leasing purpose is viable or not we need to deal with that and then from lessa's perspective going for uh, buying of the asset or leasing of the asset so which one is beneficial to the lessee that's what we need to take uh, we need to take a decision related uh, from lessa's perspective lease or buy decision and, or, and and also we need to understand several new concepts like break even lease rental calculation like that okay so this is regarding leasing decisions decision making from lessa's perspective and lessa's perspective leasing okay securitization is a theoretical concept the mechanism the participants and then the securitization instruments uh, this this is a theoretical concept we need to deal so this is regarding the first part investment decisions this is covering nearly 25% of the marks so out of 100 we are going to get 25 marks for these topics and these are very familiar topics and easy topics in fact why why because uh, one topic is already covered at cma inter level so definitely you can easily handle this particular topic okay so and also this evaluation of risky proposals for investment decisions and leasing decisions these are very easy topics you can easily get 25 out of 100 by preparing this particular area called section a investment decisions okay now i am moving to the second area from this area onwards every concept is new to you okay so look at the concept it is security analysis and portfolio management yes here is the concept equity and bond valuation and evaluation of performance so equity valuation and bond valuation you know at cma inter level itself we understood value of equity if you remember the formula for mp naught value of equity is dps 1 by ke minus c even at capital structure chapter even in the ca chapter capital structure we understood how to calculate value of equity earnings available to equity shareholders divided by ke you know my dear students but valuation of equity is a big concept we have so many formulas plenty of formulas for calculating value of equity see in dividend policy we have we have several formulas for calculating value of equity like walters model gordon model and modiglian and miller approach like that we have several formulas so in this chapter i am going to deal with every formula relating to value of equity we need to understand free cash flows approach we need to understand uh, the dividend growth model gordon model walter model multiple growth rate level model like that there are several approaches for calculating the value of equity that's what we need to understand so this chapter equity valuation and bond valuation these are two separate concepts equity valuation bond valuation equity valuation purely deals with what value of equity under several approaches okay purely the application of several formulas you can easily understand and then coming to bond valuation which deals with deals with value of bond so what is bond bond is nothing but just like debenture so you need to calculate value of bond a financial asset so while calculating the value of the bond we are, our such bonds are classified into several uh, types like plain bonds coupon bond coupon bonds and perpetual bonds nad bonds zero coupon bonds like that we have several type of bonds and for every bond you should be able to calculate value and also for these bonds since it's a financial asset investment financial instrument you should calculate the return to the investor which is nothing but white tm yield to maturity and also we need to deal with uh, several strategies like bond immunization strategy and also we need to deal with callable bonds concept so these are the areas which we need to cover under the chapter bond valuation so and also we need to cal uh, I, I mean assess the performance of these uh, financial instruments how whether they are giving better return or not evaluation of performance this will be covered under this chapter equity and bond valuation coming to mutual fund this is a known name to everyone mutual funds this is not a company actually mutual fund is a trust actually under the chapter mutual fund what we need to do see in any topic i'm not going to deal with accounting treatment under the chapter mutual funds you need to deal with calculation of nav net assess value of units mutual fund units and also we need to test the performance of several mutual funds and compare such performance with benchmark mutual fund so like that we need to understand several 
performance measures like sharp ratio trainer ratio morning star index model there are several models like the famous net selectivity model there are several models it's just merely an application of formulas okay so nav computation and performance measures which we need to understand under the chapter mutual funds along with other concepts also okay so mutual fund simply deals with what the unit holders okay company deals with shareholders mutual fund deals with unit holders next theory is next concept is portfolio theory and practice asset pricing theories portfolio performance evaluation portfolio revision and efficient market hypothesis see predominantly all these chapters comes under one chapter called pfm in simple words in the external world all these chapters are simply known as portfolio management portfolio management now if i am holding one security one company share that means i am holding one asset only if i am holding more than one company share then that means i am having a portfolio which is a group of securities see just like how you are calculating rate of return to the equity share or any other financial asset just like that you should also calculate the rate of return of a portfolio so in this chapter we need to deal with how much return one should expect for a given level of risk that's what we need to understand either for a single security or for a portfolio for every security you will expect some return so how much return i should expect for a given level of risk so that's what we need to understand in the similar way you should calculate the how much return you should expect for a given level of risk even for a portfolio also so portfolio management deals with return for risk calculation okay because of that reason you need to understand how to calculate rate of return of a portfolio and the risk of a portfolio there are so many statistical formulas which we need to use to handle this particular chapter called portfolio management in this chapter we need to understand markov's portfolio theory capital market line security market line which is nothing but capital asset pricing model and arbitrage pricing theory levered beta unlevered beta see all the formulas are statistical formulas just we need to understand such formulas it's simply an application of statistical formulas and sometimes we need lot of interpretations okay that's regarding portfolio management expecting return for a given level of risk okay already one concept is covered at cma interlevel which is capital asset pricing model but we need to understand the depth of such capital asset pricing model in this chapter portfolio management okay so these are the next areas financial risk management you know dear students financial risk management means how to manage our risk see being an investor when you are investing a lot of money in the stock market you should manage your risk why because such investments are subject to what fluctuations such fluctuations should be managed with what some contracts so such contracts should be entered by every investor in order to mitigate risk see such type of contracts are technically known as derivatives see this this is what derivatives so look at this chapter risks in financial market first of all you have to understand that then financial derivative instruments for risk management there are so many agreements i mean contracts derivative contracts for mitigating the risk like option contracts future contracts see option contracts which deals with stock and option contracts which deals with interest rate like that we have several strategies which we need to apply for mitigating the risk hedging strategies for earning profit we'll use arbitrage strategies okay stock futures index futures okay like that uh, uh, we need to understand several concepts in this chapter called financial risk management this chapter predominantly deals with what management of risk in the stock market especially even in the regular financial market like interest rate risk okay so we need to deal with these areas why because these investments are subject to market risk so i should eliminate such risk by entering into these derivative instruments but nowadays people are using these derivative instruments as trading but in fact these derivative instruments are meant for mitigating the risk not for entering into business so it, this is not meant for speculation but people are using this particular area for speculation purpose that means to earn profits this is not i mean this particular chapter is not meant for earning profits the objective of this chapter i mean the objective of this concept derivatives is to mitigate risk and earning profits without risk okay this is regarding financial risk management derivatives a new chapter you can remember this chapter as derivatives a very important chapter okay dear students i need to tell you one important point section b deals with 35% of the uh, i mean subject actually so which means 
it is going to uh, i mean we, we 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 can get 35 marks out of 100 marks by dealing with this topics equity valuation bond valuation mutual funds portfolio management a very lengthy topic and also it is loaded with lot of weight okay now this financial risk management derivatives weight as is 20 percent out of 100 i'm going to get 20 marks so even derivatives is a big chapter okay the last i mean the last problematic area is international financial management you know international financial management deals with currency market we have several markets like stock market money market currency market there are other markets also commodity market but we deals with, i mean we are going to deal with stock market money market and this currency market currency market you cannot see currency market in the external world see this will be operated by banks and other several uh, and other partners i mean there are so many dealers foreign currency dealers so uh, through them we can deal with the foreign currency we can exchange the foreign currency so there is no designated platform for what this forex market so even a bank is a one of the platform for what trading or foreign currency so under this chapter international financial management nothing but forex market we need to understand several areas like exchange rate quotations direct quote indirect quote bid rate ask rate spread cross rates spot market forward market and then parity relationships and also in this chapter we need to understand derivatives also currency derivatives currency options currency futures these are the areas which we need to deal uh, deal with so in this chapter purely we will deal with the foreign currencies like dollars euros pounds yen okay so how to handle these currencies how to identify the currencies exchange rate how to identify the currency names and how to how to calculate the direct quote and indirect quote and how to understand those direct quotes and indirect quotes those are nothing but exchange rate quotation when you want to buy one of the one of the currency you should understand the exchange rate quotation otherwise you cannot buy it okay so in this chapter we'll deal with these areas so so some this is completely a new area for us so the weight is is around 15 percent of the whole chapter uh, i mean whole uh, out of 100 mark marks well, we are going to get 15 percent of the marks okay the last area is digital finance you know this is a regular world you can see uh, nowadays actually this paytms phone pays right uh, this is nothing but digital finance so we are not using cash nowadays we are using digital finance only so we should understand tra traditional finance versus digital finance concept and then we should we need to understand the regulation and governance uh, from government perspective and digital finance environment we need to understand digital finance environment so this is purely a theoretical concept the weight is, is five percent very less weight is but still you should give utmost importance to these weight i mean theoretical concepts also because you you need to handle multi, multiple choice questions mcqs okay this is regarding the coverage of all the topics under the subject strategic financial management so see more or less they are giving they are strictly following this weightage percentages with little deviation like one person or two person only in one of the examination they have deviated a lot they have given lot of weightage to this particular area called investment decisions around 40 marks were given in fact we are supposed to get 25 only but they have given for 40 marks but that doesn't matter in the recent examinations they are following they are strictly following these uh, weights okay weightages so dear students this is regarding all the topics so predominantly in this subject we need to deal with stock market currency market and money market okay so if you can understand these markets definitely you can handle these chapters okay this is regarding the subject for strategic financial management so for better understanding purpose i'm releasing one demo class so that is related to your investment decisions topic which is already covered at cma interlevel that's some some of the basic concepts like irr a modified NPV and modified IRR concepts were covered in this particular video. So, following, I mean, after this video, you can see that particular video which deals with what 
the concept of IRR modified NPV and modified IRR. So just look at that video and how I am going to teach the subject you can understand it. So thank you so much my dear students. Good evening all of you dear students. Yes, the next concept is internal rate of return IRR. Yes, you know, internal rate of return means, first of all, return means profit. Rate of return means percentage of profit. You have to calculate the percentage of profit which is internally included in the future cash flows of the project. You know, your future cash inflows are loaded with two important components. One is your investment, other one is profit percentage which is IRR. So, I can say one thing. Say for example, we are evaluating three years project. And we are investing some amount of money today. That's your cash outflow. And for that we are going to receive cash inflows for the next three years. These are your cash inflows. So these future cash inflows are generally loaded with two important components called investment and the second one is profit. So, every year cash inflow will be loaded with two components, investment and profit, investment and profit. Now, if you convert this profit into percentage, if you convert this profit into percentage on compounded basis, that particular profit percentage is simply known as internal rate of return. So, in simple words, your future cash inflows are loaded with two components. One is your investment, other one is your profit percentage which is technically known as IRR. So, the future cash inflows are loaded with investment and IRR. So, my point is, if you remove this particular profit percentage, nothing but IRR from the future cash inflows, then the balance discounted value, nothing but the present value of such cash inflows should represent your investment. So, simply speaking, if I can remove this IRR by discounting the future cash inflows at IRR, then automatically the present value of cash inflows should be equal to my investment. Why? Because if I can remove the internal rate of return from the future cash inflows through, the, through discounting, so if I can remove this IRR percentage from the future cash inflows through discounting, then the present value of cash inflows must represent my investment. So that's why. If you can discount the future cash inflows at IRR, that means IRR is the discount rate. IRR is the discount rate at which the present value of all the future cash inflows, that means if you can discount the future cash inflows at IRR, so by removing IRR from the future cash inflows, the present value of all the cash inflows must be equal to my present value of cash outflows, present value of cash outflows or I can say this will be my initial investment, initial investment. So I can say IRR is a discount rate at which the present value of cash inflows must be equal to my present value of cash outflows which means the present value of cash inflows minus present value of cash outflows should be equal to 0, there your NPV is equal to 0. So, I can say one thing, IRR is the discount rate at which NPV is equal to 0, that is what IRR. So, what is IRR? IRR is the discount rate which equates present value of cash inflows with present value of cash outflows, there your NPV is equal to 0, yes. So, this is the true understanding of IRR. So, my dear students, I am just consolidating the points. The future cash inflows are generally loaded with two important components. One is our investment that we are investing in year zero and the second component is the profit component which is which can be expressed as a percentage that is known as IRR. So, 
prima facie i can say the future cash inflows are loaded with investment and irr if i can remove this irr component from the future cash inflows by discounting such cash inflows at irr discounting will remove irr then the present value of all the cash inflows must be equal to my investment portion so that's why at the irr discount rate present value of cash inflows should be equal to my initial investment or present value of cash outflows there your npv is equal to zero so simply speaking irr is a discount rate at which npv is equal to zero let us consider one example to understand this irr i'm taking one year project life just for the sake of convenience and here is my investment 1 lakh rupees this is my initial investment and at the end of first year i am going to get 1 lakh 15000 cash inflow this is my cash inflow this is my cash inflow okay now my dear student prime of ac by seeing this number anybody can say that 1 lakh rupees is added with 15000 profit if you can convert such 15,000 profit into percentage on my investment, that should be 15% because it's a one year project life. So, simply I can say that 15% is my profit percentage. So, my point is this cash inflow should be loaded with my investment amount of 1 lakh plus IRR of 15%. Anybody can say this, right? Why? Because prime of AC by seeing this number, since it's a one year life, I can easily calculate my IRR percentage. Generally, this is not possible for prospect life which is more than one year. Okay. See, for, for the sake of better understanding, I have taken one year prospect life here. Now, if you can discount this cash inflow of 1 lakh 15,000 at 15% rate, because that's an IRR, such 15% will be completely removed. So, 1 lakh 15,000 into 1 by 1 plus, I mean, I'm, use, I'm using what the present value factor 1 by 1 plus R whole to the power of N, 0 0.15 whole to the power of 1. Yes. Simply, I can say 1 lakh 15,000 into 1 by 1.15, this will be 0 0.86956. Multiply this number with 1 lakh 15,000, you will get 99,999 or I can say 1 lakh rupees. This is my present value of cash inflow. What is your observation my dear students? Initially the cash inflow is 1 lakh 15,000. After discounting such 1 lakh 15,000 cash inflow set IRR of 15%, I got present value of cash inflow of 1 lakh. So, I can simply say that I have successfully removed the IRR portion from the future cash inflow and I got present value of cash inflow of 1 lakh. And here, this is exactly equal to my initial investment of 1 lakh. If I deduct this initial investment from my present value of cash inflow, then I will get an NPV of 0 value. Okay. So, this is what IRR is all about. So, have you observed one thing? By discounting the future cash inflow at IRR rate, I got my NPV which is equal to 0. So, I can say that IRR is a discount rate at which NPV is equal to 0 because IRR is a profit percentage. If you can remove profit percentage from the future cash inflow, remaining portion must represent my initial investment. That is why at that rate, my, my NPV should be equal to 0. Okay. This is regarding the conceptual and explanation regarding IRR. Now, how to calculate this IRR? Generally, for a one-year project life, it is very easy for us to calculate IRR, but for the projects with multiple years life, I can I cannot simply calculate IRR. It should be calculated by the use of several formulas and a, co a conceptual work, right? So, let me show you how to do it, IRR. If the cash flows are equal, I can use annuity method for calculating IRR. If the cash flows are unequal, then I can use trial and error method.
trial and error method okay so if the cash flows are equal i can use nad method if the cash flows are unequal we can use what trial and error method yes so what is this nad method and trial and error method nad method is already covered at your cma inter level and we are going to cover trial and error method and also while solving the remaining problems in the study material i am going to cover this nad method also okay right now i am going to i am not going to cover this nad method but i am going to cover trial and error method first of all okay yes every capital busting technique must represent your must be useful for taking decisions irr is a profit percentage that should always be more than my investors expected rate of return which means in order to select the project your irr should be equal to the expected return called cost of capital so if irr is greater than cost of capital you can accept the project if irr is less than cost of capital you should reject the project if it is equal to cost of capital it is up to you to decide whether you can accept the project or not that means may or may not accept the project okay so copy this content completely internal rate of return Yes, dear students, let us handle one problem related to this IRR concept and a trial and error method. Look at this illustration number 13. Consider the following information in respect of a project. Project cost is 1,10,000. Cash inflows, year 1, 60,000, year 2, like that for 4 years the cash flows are given and these cash flows are unequal. So, I must use trial and error method for solving IRR. Calculate the internal rate of return. So, you are supposed to handle internal rate of return concept. Yes. Where is the question? Illustration number 13. Under trial and error method, you should go for guesswork, nothing but, yes, there is no specific discount rate here. So, you must start with first guess rate. Generally, the first guess rate will be started with 10% by assuming that at least we can earn 10% return from any project. If at all, if your IRR is less than 10%, then that is our fate. Why? Because we are earning very lesser return. Okay. So, generally for any problem, your IRR will be more than 10% only. So, we will always be started with 10% rate of return for calculating IRR. Okay. Calculation of IRR. So, this particular concept is already covered at CMA inter level. It is just a repetition actually. You just try to recollect your memories from the CMA inter level. Again, I am just explaining every point but, but try to recover your points also. Okay. Here. Cash flows. The first guess rate should be 10% by assuming that at least I can earn 10% rate of return from the project. Under trial and error method, you should assume the first guess rate, first discount rate uh, from your analysis. Okay. So here is my first guess rate 10% and present value of cash flows. 0 here, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 years. My investment is 1,10,000. First year inflow is 60,000. Second year inflow is 20,000. Third year 10,000. Fourth year 50,000. So, I am taking first guess state 0 year factor 1. So, please calculate NPV at your first guess state. If your NPV is equal to 0, this 10% becomes your IRR. If your NPV is positive, then go for another discount rate 
because there is an inverse relationship between discount rate and NPV. If you can increase the discount rate, NPV gets reduced. So, if your NPV is positive at first guess rate, then increase your next guess rate. So that, in case again if you get positive NPV, then you go for another discount rate until you get zero. In case if you get negative NPV, then go for interpolation method for calculating IRR. So, how to do that? I'll explain it. 0 0.909. 0 0.826, 0 0.751, 0 0.683. Hope you can refer the present value factor table for 10% discount rate. 1 lakh 10,000, 60,000 into 0 0.909, 54,540. Twenty thousand into zero point eight two six, sixteen thousand five hundred and twenty. Ten thousand into zero point seven five one, seven thousand five ten. Fifty thousand into zero point six eight one, <coughs> thirty four thousand fifty. Total minus one lakh. It will be twelve thousand six twenty. That's my positive NPV. Was it one lakh ten thousand? Okay, sorry. Minus 10,000, that is 2,625. This is my positive NPV. 16,520, 7,000, 54,540, 7,510, 34,050. I have taken 150. 50,000 into 0 0.68. 34,150, yeah, it's a wrong number. 34,150, it will be <coughs> 2,720. Now, go for the next guess rate. Generally, my choice is the next guess rate should be with 10% deviation. In the study material, they have taken 12%. I am not sure about 12% or 13%. Why? Because I cannot go for multiple guess rates. Instead of that, I will go ahead with 10% deviation. So, uh, you will get approximate answer that will also be considered in the examination solution. You know, dear students, in the examination, you are supposed to take guess rates, but such guess rates are generally given in the examination paper. Okay. So, don't bother about these guess rates. The, those rates will be given in the problem itself on the main examination. Okay. I am taking 20% guess rate. So, your answer will be slightly different from your study materials answer. If you can take 12%, you will get exact, exactly uh, the answer which is equal to your study material. Okay. So, let me show you the present value factor at, from study material. I mean, the present value factor table at 20%. Here are the factors. 0.833, 0 0.694, 0 0.895, 0 0.900, 0 0.901, 0 0.902, 0 0.579, 0 0.482. Yes, this one is one. Present value of cash flows. One lakh ten thousand. Sixty thousand into point eight three three. Forty nine thousand nine eighty. 20,000 into 0.694, 13,880, 10,000 into 0.579, 5,790, 50,000 into 0.482, 24,100. Total 93,750 minus 1,10,000. It will be minus 16,250. So, we got negative NPV at 20% discount rate and positive NPV at 10% discount rate. Yes. Now, the, your IRR lies in between 10 and 20%. So, you can use interpolation method for handling, for calculating IRR. 
using interpolation method there is a formula for calculating irr using interpolation method irr is equal to l1 plus npva l1 divided by npva l1 minus npva l2 into l2 minus l1 your lowest guess rate is 10 percent 0.10 npva l1 is 2720 divided by 2720 minus of minus 16250 into 0 0.20 minus 0 0.10 2720 divided by 16,250 plus 2,720, 18,970 into 0.10. 0.10 into 2,720 divided by 18,970 plus 0 0.10. 0 0.1143. or 11.43 percentage this is my IRR you know they got 11.28 percent this is an approximate answer if you can take 12 percent you will get accurate answer which is equal to your study material that is okay this is also an acceptable answer why because nobody can guess that 12 percent in the examination if that was not given in the if, if it will if it is not given in the examination okay. So, write the solution. Yes. With this, we understood how to calculate IRR. Now, my next job is to calculate modified IRR. We need to understand modified error concept. See how to calculate modified error. I will show you the process which is given in the study material. We have a process regarding this modified error computation. Yes. Here is the process. Uh, before going for this, I need to tell you one important point in IRR. At IRR discount rate, profitability index is equal to 1. Why? Because at IRR rate, present value of cash inflows are exactly equal to present value of cash outflows. So, the numerator and denominator term in profitability index is same. So, that you will get 1. 1 profitability index. So, at IRR discount rate, profitability index is exactly equal to 1. Okay. Here is the process to calculate modified IRR. So, these are the following steps you should follow strictly. Calculate the future value of each cash flow from the project by using cost of capital as a compounded rate. So, convert all the years cash inflows into terminal year project ending life by using cost of capital as a compound rate, reinvestment rate. Calculate the aggregate future value, may be called as terminal value. So, I must calculate terminal value by using cost of capital as a reinvestment rate. So, convert all the years cash inflows into terminal year. Calculate the initial investment in case of conventional cash flows process. Conventional cash flows means there will be one cash outflow in year 0. Or present value of all cash outflows in case of non-conventional cash flows project. Non-conventional cash flow project means such project involves multiple cash outflows in the project life. Okay. So, if you can see single outflow in the whole life of the project in year 0 then that is conventional cash flow pattern in case if you can see more than one cash outflow like that like, like in year 0 there will be one outflow at the end of second year there will be another outflow at the end of fourth year there will be another outflow like that if you can see multiple cash outflow then such cash flows pattern is known as non-conventional cash flows pattern so what's your job 
in case of non conventional cash flows calculate present value of all cash outflows ultimately arrive initial investment if it is conventional cash outflow conventional cash flow arrive present value of cash outflows simply speaking in zero terms i i need what present value of cash outflows or initial investment okay determine the discount rate that equates the present value of the aggregate future value with the initial investment or present value of all cash outflows such rate will be modified irr see instead of uh, understanding this you better go ahead with this formula actually they are saying at modified irr present value of cash outflows should be equal to present value of all the future cash inflows present value of all the future cash inflows nothing but present value of terminal value this is simply present value of terminal value what they are trying to say is terminal value into 1 by 1 plus modified irr rate okay so if you can discount terminal value at modified irr rate that present value of terminal value should be equal to present value of cash outflow or initial investment this is one way of computing the modified irr the other way is modified irr can be calculated by using this formula for conventional and non conventional cash flows we have two formulas here okay we have two formulas here for conventional and non conventional cash flows look at this modified irr formula for non conventional cash flows nth root of i said what nth root of aggregate future value of cash inflows nothing but terminal value okay this is terminal value divided by aggregate present value of cash outflow this is initial investment or present value of cash outflows okay whole term this whole term minus 1 that gives me modified error okay or in case of conventional cash flows i'll write initial investment instead of present value of cash outflows so nth root of aggregate future value of cash inflow so nothing but this is also terminal value divided by initial investment nth root of terminal value divided by initial investment minus 1 you should also deduct minus 1 that was missed here for non conventional cash flows minus 1 subtraction is common okay these are the formulas for calculating modified error see only by solving the problem you can understand this particular concept yes i'll show you how to do it without wasting your time i'll straight away jump into the problem why because we don't have enough more time to handle all the concepts okay sometimes i may not take examples to explain some of the concepts why because these concepts are already covered at cma inter level it's just a repetition no issue you can understand these concepts again with while solving the problems okay so now here is the problem this illustration number 15 which gives you better understanding regarding modified error let me show you how to apply this particular process just now we understood one process right for calculating modified error how to apply that particular process for calculating modified error we have a formula right nth root of what terminal value divided by present value of cash outflows minus 1 for non conventional cash flows nth root of terminal value divided by initial investment minus 1 that is for conventional cash flows so my first job is to calculate terminal value how to calculate terminal value convert all the years cash inflows into terminal year by using cost of capital as available reinvestment rate once we get the terminal value it is very easy for you to calculate modified irr so here is a problem illustration number 15 calculate the aggregate future value from the following information calculate see ignore this from the following information calculate modified irr of the project initial outlay is 1 lakh cost of capital is 12% per annum life of the project is 5 years and cash inflows from the project are 20 30 40 50 000 and 30 000 so we have 5 years inflows here okay so i must consider 5 years life so for 5th year ending i mean by the end of 5th year i must calculate terminal value that's my first job okay illustration number 15 so in step 1 i should calculate terminal value okay then fine let me handle this part here
calculation of terminal value. Let me take the columns here. cash flows reinvestment period for how many years you are reinvesting your cash flows calculation and terminal value okay so 1 2 3 4 5 2 3 4 and 5 the first year cash inflow is 20000 second year 30000 third year 40000 Fifth year fifty thousand, fourth year fifty thousand, fifth year also, I mean fifth year it will, it will be thirty thousand. Yes. First year ending inflow can be reinvested for four years because second, third, fourth, and fifth. Four years, three years, two years, one year, and zero years. Cost of capital should be your reinvestment rate. Okay. So twenty thousand into one plus zero point. The cost of capital rate is 12 percent 0.12 plus 0 0.12 into 1 plus 0 0.12 plus 0 0.12 50,000 into 1 plus 0 0.12 whole to the power of 1 and 30,000 into 1 plus 0 0.12 whole to the power of 0. So, let us take the numbers 1.12 1 yeah that is 2 actually. Two, three, four into 20,000 will be 31,470. Two three into thirty thousand forty two thousand one forty eight fifty thousand one hundred and seventy six fifty six thousand thirty thousand Add these numbers two lakh nine thousand seven eighty three or seven eighty four. This is my terminal value. So, what is my next task? Say so it is a clear case of conventional cash flow, initial investment is clearly given. So, modified IRR, MIRR is equal to for conventional cash flows, the formula is nth root of terminal value divided by initial investment minus 1 n means life of the project fifth root of your terminal value is 209794 divided by 
your initial investment is 1 lakh. From this whole term, I have to deduct 1. See, 2 lakh 9,784 divided by 1 lakh. It will be 2.09794. Fifth root of 2.09794. Minus 1. So, how to take this number out of this fifth root? We have a format for calculating this nth root of any number. I will show you. Take that number from nth root and apply square root for 15 times. Apply square root 15 times. Step 2, step 1 minus 1, step 3, step 2 divide by n plus 1, step 4 into is equal to into is equal to for 15 times. If you can apply this process, you can easily get the answer. Okay. Yes. Here is your number 2.097794. So, type that number in your calculator 2.09794. 2.09794. Apply square root 15 times for this number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Subtract 1 from it. Divide by n means nth root. n means uh, here it is 5. Plus 1 into is equal to 1 time. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I got 1 1.1597. 1 1.1597. 1 so, this will be 1.1597. 1 I got another number 35 something like that. No need to take that. It will be 0 0.1597 or 15.97 percentage. So, even in the study material, we got the same number. So, just copy this part completely. Yes, with this we understood modified IRR concept. Now let us understand modified NPV, that is our next concept. Say, I will tell you how to calculate this modified NPV. First, under step number 1, Calculate the terminal value by using reinvestment rate as a compound rate. Convert all the years cash inflows into terminal year just like for in the modified IRR concept. We should convert all the years cash inflows into terminal year by using available reinvestment rate as a compound rate. Calculate terminal value by converting interim cash flows into terminal year
by using available reinvestment rate. Once we get the terminal value, then discount such terminal value by using cost of capital as a discount rate. Calculate the present value of terminal value by using cost of capital as appropriate discount rate. Okay. So, once we get the present value of terminal value, then you can easily calculate modified NPV. Modified NPV is equal to present value of terminal value minus initial investment. It is a simple process to handle. Just copy this. Modified NPV computation. We have one problem in this regard. Let us handle that problem. Here is the question. Illustration number 16. A company is contemplating an investment project of 4 years with an initial outlay of 1,20,000. The cash inflows estimated from the project are 30,000, 40,000, 30,000 and 36,000, 4 years life. The estimated rates at which the above cash flows will be reinvested are. First year ending cash flow can be reinvested at a reinvestment rate of 8%. Second year 9 percent, third year 10 percent, fourth year 9 percent. The cost of capital is 10 percent per annum. Analyze the viability of the project under terminal value method. My dear students, modified NPV concept is also known as terminal value method. This is nothing but modified NPV. Okay. Yes. So, what is your first job? Convert all the years inflows into terminal year by using reinvestment rate as the appropriate compound rate. Illustration number 16. Step number 1. Calculation of terminal value. The same columns I am going to take along with one additional column called reinvestment rate. Yes. Here, cash flows. Reinvestment rate, reinvestment period, calculation, and finally the terminal value. Okay, these are the columns 1, 2, 3, 4. First year ending inflow it is 30,000. Second year, 40,000. Third year, 30, 36. You know, the first year ending cash flow can be reinvested for three years, second year, two years, third year, one year, and fourth year ending cash flow cannot be reinvested again. Fourth year ending cash flow remains fourth year ending cash flow only. Yeah, okay, actually, I have taken here. 3, 2, 1, 0. Let me take the discount rates 8, 9, 10, 9 reinvestment rates. These are my reinvestment rates. Now let me take the calculation 30,000 into 1 plus 0 0.08 whole to the power of 3. 2, 3 into 30,000. It will be 37,792, 
ओके थर्टी थाउजेंड इंटू वन प्लस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो एट होल्ड टू द पॉवर ऑफ थ्री टू थ्री इंटू थर्टी थाउजेंड प्लस थर्टी सेवन थाउजेंड सेवन नाइन्टी वन फोर्टी थाउजेंड इंटू वन प्लस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन होल्ड टू द पॉवर ऑफ टू फोर्टी सेवन फाइव ट्वेंटी फोर थर्टी थाउजेंड इंटू वन पॉइंट वन या थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड इंटू वन प्लस जीरो पॉइंट जीरो नाइन होल्ड टू द पॉवर ऑफ जीरो थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड यस सम ऑफ दिस नंबर्स थर्टी सेवन सेवन नाइन्टी वन प्लस फोर्टी सेवन फाइव ट्वेंटी फोर प्लस थर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड प्लस थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड वन फिफ्टी फोर थ्री फिफ्टी दिस इज माई टर्मिनल वैल्यू नाउ इट इज वेरी इजी फॉर अस टू कैलकुलेट मॉडिफाइड एनपीवी नाउ मॉडिफाइड एनपीवी इज इक्वल टू प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ टर्मिनल वैल्यू माइनस इनिशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट और प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ कैश आउटलॉस so your terminal value is वन लैख फिफ्टी फोर थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टीन इन टू वन बाई वन प्लस द कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल रेट इज टेन पर्सेंट जीरो पॉइंट वन जीरो होल्ड द पॉवर ऑफ इट इज एट द एंड ऑफ फोर्थ इयर पॉवर फोर माइनस माई इनिशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट इज वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड सो आई नीड फोर्थ इयर एंडिंग प्रसेंट वैल्यू फैक्टर दैट इज पॉइंट सिक्स एट थ्री वन फिफ्टी फोर थ्री फिफ्टीन इंटू पॉइंट सिक्स एट थ्री माइनस वन लैख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड फोर्टीन थाउजेंड सिक्स नॉट टू नेगेटिव माइनस फोर्टीन थाउजेंड सिक्स नॉट टू नेगेटिव सो सेंस द मॉडिफाइड एन पी वी इज नेगेटिव द प्रोजेक्ट इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल जस्ट कॉपी द सोल्यूशन Yes. <coughs> okay. Write the conclusion. Since the modified NPV is negative, the project is not acceptable. That's it. With this, problem number illustration number sixteen is over. In the next session, we'll handle the remaining concepts. Thank you.